I think the most important takeaway is to um, uh, to go inward and, and spend some time inward and really to honor how they feel around tech use. To keep in mind that the intent for these devices is to allow us to be connected to others. If at any point it's not making them feel that way, then the biggest takeaway would be to evaluate and reflect upon those feelings, try to figure out what's going on. Hi, this is Jim Sander with EverFi and welcome to today's quick learning lab where we will be focusing on digital citizenship, balancing screen time, and just general wellness when it comes to safe and healthy technology use for students, families, and pretty much anyone else really. In this session, we'll be highlighting resources from both Intentionally Unplugged and EverFi. So make sure you stick around at the end of the conversation because we're gonna go through a demo for how to get access to EverFi's Ignition Digital Wellness and Safety course. It's a free self-paced online program for middle and high school students to help you address these topics in the classroom. But first, I'm excited to share our conversation with Denise Rowland of Intentionally Unplugged. She is also a teacher in addition to founding this organization that really focuses on helping families create healthy boundaries when it comes to technology use. Let's hear how Denise got her start in this work. Excellent. Well, thank you for having me here. I'm, I'm happy to be a guest and to talk to you about this very hot topic. First and foremost, I am a mother and a wife and a teacher. And those are the three main ways that I define myself. And Intentionally Unplugged was really born from all three of those realms put together. Um, I was a teacher for about eight, 10 years in the public sector before I had my first child. And then I moved on to have two, having two more children. And during that time, um, I spent some time at home just raising them in their early years. And I um, left the classroom for a bit. And during my time at home, the, the world seemed to shift into uh, a very screen dependent, uh, particularly portable screen devices uh, society. And what I found as a mother at home was that it became a time in my life where I had never felt so connected and so isolated at the same time. And um, I was raising my children and I didn't want to take that for granted because what an it what a blessing to have that experience and to be able to be home with them, but also just desperately seeking an outlet of some kind of socialization. So uh, personally, as an adult, I found myself just mindlessly scrolling on social media and then reflecting upon how that made me feel. It wasn't always good. Um, and when it came time that my youngest had entered, you know, nursery school and I was revisiting the thought of going back to work, I re-entered the classroom in, um, new, new districts because I was, you know, trying to get my foot back in the door. And I saw throughout several different buildings that now I was seeing a, a similar pattern in the middle schoolers that I was teaching in that they were coming to the classroom and really, um, still heavy with whatever had happened in their home at night that they saw being posted or that somebody commented on. And so it was somewhat of a professional awakening for me to say, hey, I just went through all of this as an adult in my house and now I see it changing in our classrooms. And I didn't see this just five years ago when I left teaching to come home and, and raise my kids. So I saw a very clear shift um, in what was happening in our classrooms and in our homes. And I actually had a couple of experiences in my own home life where my children, namely my daughter, who of course is the more outspoken of my, uh, my clan, but she said to me, mom, I'm talking to you, put your phone down. And, and she was four years old and she started saying things like that. So it had me just kind of um, thinking about what we need to talk to our kids about how to handle these devices and how to uh, discuss with them the, the helpful aspects of them, but also the harmful aspects of them and how to coexist in this digital age without losing human connection. 
And if I was struggling with that as an adult, then of course they would be struggling with it too. And we kind of have to relearn certain communication skills and social skills. So that's how Intentionally Unplugged was born. Well, I think that it's important to recognize that not all screen time is created equal. So we just, we need to get used to that and adopt that reality as soon as we can. Because if I'm using screen time right now in an active way to have a conversation with you because uh, the circumstances of the pandemic make it impossible for us to have an interview otherwise, well, guess what? I see your faces. I see your eyes and your expression. And we're having like a connected moment right now that we wouldn't normally be able to have because of circumstances that are outside of our control. Is this a particularly addictive way of using screens and is it problematic? No, generally not. This is an active screen use, FaceTime, connecting with loved ones, um, going through distance learning or taking a course. These are not generally the areas that we see affecting um, teens mental health, adult mental health. On the flip side, if you look at something where a person is more inclined to get sucked into this mindless scroll, namely social media, I think it's like 3 billion users now of social media that we're at. And with that sharp incline of social media use, we have also seen a correlating decline in mental health. So um, certainly, if I had to say, or if I had to give advice to a parent or even to myself, my own home, uh, what use is helpful and what use is harmful, I would start by looking at the differences between active screen time that is engaging somehow, either mentally, emotionally, or physically, because people are exercising from home using screens, and that's fantastic, versus a passive use where I see in my children a change in behavior. I can't get their attention. They seem to be totally lured in and grabbed by whatever uh, game or YouTube video that is not serving them. Active screen use is more preferred versus passive screen use, which is less preferred because you seen those you see those more harmful kinds of effects associated. I think that uh, where it comes to resources for the classroom, you know, the whole intentionally unplugged curriculum that's available to schools um, through our website really aims to combine social emotional learning plus mindfulness plus the digital age and get down to the root of having these conversations with kids that makes them think, okay, so how am I going to utilize this amazing world of screens and technology that can serve to be a great asset in my life without losing my mental, emotional health and well-being? And that was the whole premise behind developing this, um, this curriculum, which is quite extensive. You know, it really covers about three plus weeks of curriculum in any, you know, online, fully remote uh, or hybrid or in-person classroom where, you know, we, we start talking about, we start talking to kids about how we can coexist in this digital world and also stay healthy and mindful and be really careful about our practices with its use. Um, and my goal with that is trying to get kids, like take social media, for instance. What if we started talking to kids about thinking first before they post a selfie with what they're wearing in their designer clothes or before they post about what party they're at? What if we make them think empathically and be more emotionally intelligent about the ripple effects that that has for the viewers? And there's pieces of that in the curriculum there are also elements of, um, there's like little math equations in there. How much time are we spending on social media? And if we broke it down to, I don't know, an average of about five hours a day for teens times seven days a week times 52 weeks a year, we might come up with a number that's like seven years spent on social media. 
So we put together this curriculum that um, has been downloaded now hundreds of times across the nation in hopes of starting these really important conversations with young people and then sparking even more conversations inside of the home about establishing healthy boundaries around screen use. Thank you so much to Denise for sharing all of her expertise with us on this really important topic that I think is on all of our minds a lot right now. What we're gonna do next is I'm gonna show you how to get started with Ignition from EverFi. So the first thing you're going to need to do, open up a new tab in your browser and go to everfi.net. First, click the blue register button on the right side. Then click where it says teacher. Enter your state. And then you'll have to start typing the name of your school. It should pop up automatically. Then click next. And just fill out your account details here, name, school email, set up your password. And then the most important part here at the bottom is where you select a course. Make sure you select Ignition. And then that'll be the first course that you'll have on your account when you log in. Click I agree and then next. After you're done registering, you'll end up here at your EverFi teacher dashboard with a couple extra courses that are automatically bundled with Ignition. First, let's go ahead and click this view course button next to Ignition. That lets us see a student preview of the course itself. So here on the main menu, you'll see all the six different lessons in Ignition. We've got technology and data, rights and literacy, evaluating content. But let's go back and look at lesson three, which focuses on screen time versus offline time. In this lesson, students are gonna hang out with a character named Sophia, and she's gonna go through her day and basically model how modern students are using their technology devices, just some kind of realistic social scenarios that she's gonna be going through. So here at the beginning, we see her kind of staying up a little bit too late, messaging friends on her phone, and kind of feeling the results of staying up too late when she wakes up for school in the next morning, which I'm sure a lot of people can relate to. Even get to see her hang out with a friend at school, but simultaneously texting another friend, so she's not really being present. And right when she gets out of school, she immediately gets on social media to check her feeds and sees pictures of friends who are hanging out without her. So we're kind of seeing the results of spending a lot of time on one device like this. Every lesson in Ignition also has a built-in pre and post assessment that's automatically graded for you. And you can keep track of all of your students' scores and their progress on your reports tab from your teacher dashboard. So you'll see these are just relatively quick assessments, five questions at the beginning of the lesson to see what students' current level of understanding is around these topics. And then once they finish these assessments, they just jump right back into the course experience. Back on the teacher dashboard here, I want you to go ahead and click the resources button. This is gonna give you all of the supplemental offline materials that basically enhance the self-paced digital lessons that Ignition offers. So there's gonna be lesson plans, we take a look at one of those right now. So this is for that same lesson, screen time versus offline time. So it's gonna give you some discussion-based activities for your classes, some prompts, basically just full additional activities that you can use to reinforce what students are learning as they're going through the self-paced modules. I would just recommend exploring this. You'll see that there's also some posters that you can use for your classroom, just kind of reinforcing some of these same concepts more visually. You'll see that you also have access to our Get Digital program in partnership with Facebook. If you click this Get Started button, it'll take you to the Get Digital website where you can access the facilitator guide. This is basically an entire curriculum that's gonna help students just safely navigate the digital world and it's built around five pillars, foundations, wellness, engagement, empowerment, and opportunities. Basically just helping students build core competencies and skills that they need to stay safe and healthy when they're online. Now that we've previewed a couple of the resources, let's go over setting up a class registration code for your students. So on the teacher dashboard, click create class, this green button. 
and just fill out the class details. So make sure you give it a class name. I'm going to call mine Digital Wellness 2021. Select a start date, a class size, and a grade level. And you can also add multiple grade levels if you need to. At the bottom here, there's a button that says Add Courses. So if you wanted to combine this with any additional courses, you can select them here. Ignition will automatically bundle with Future Goals Hockey Scholar. So once you're done filling that out, click the blue Create button on the top right, and this will give you your registration code for your students. So you can actually just click Copy right here and share this code with your students when they register. Once they put in this code, they will have instant access to all of the online self-paced lessons. Thank you for joining us today for this quick learning lab. If you're looking for any additional life skills courses, don't forget to explore the catalog tab on your EverFi account or visit us at everfi.com slash k-12. We'll see you soon. Thank you.